Ten years ago, a small group set out to bring the pharmaceutical industry together on a single issue. While some didn't realize it, it affected every drug company, big and small. Green chemistry. With the help of the American Chemical Society's Green Chemistry Institute, the Pharmaceutical Roundtable was born. From a humble start, the results have been phenomenal. Join us as we celebrate 10 years of accomplishments and look to the future of pharma. The thing about the Pharmaceutical Roundtable, the whole idea behind it, was that some of the greatest chemistry in the world is going on in the pharmaceutical sector. So my whole professional life has been devoted to showing that green chemistry is excellent chemistry. So the first thing I did is call up the leader of green chemistry in the pharmaceutical sector. Paul knew that I was at Pfizer and had created the green chemistry program there and led it. And we wondered whether it was possible to do what I had accomplished at Pfizer across the entire pharmaceutical industry. So our idea was to create what some people refer to as a community of practice, which is a bunch of people who share a common interest of passion around the subject or topic or an important problem and get together to work on it in a pre-competitive or non-competitive way. It took about two years for us to figure out how to work together. Initially, the, the perspective kind of going into this is if you look at a football field, it's, you know, maybe the non-competitive space was going to be between the the 45 and 50 yard line, well it turns out it's more like it's between the 20 and the 20. What they compete on is the molecule that becomes the drug, the active pharmaceutical ingredient. How you put that together is effectively done the same way across the entire industry. Once we knew that we could count on each other and we could trust each other, then we could start throwing out the real critical issues and you know, admitting what our challenges were. We put together a paper in, uh, which was published in 2007, which is basically the grand challenges in the pharmaceutical industry. And that really was a pivotal paper. It allowed the academics to go to a place and say, hmm, here are some problems that they're really interested in. The roundtable realized that if they were really going to make this stick, they had to put their money where their mouth was. I think of the roundtable really as a bridging group. When we put out our grants, we get an opportunity to see their perspective, they see our perspective. We do very collaborative scientific discussions. The grant I received from the ACS GCI was to develop um, nickel catalyzed cross couplings or greener variants of these coupling reactions that my lab had been working on for a while. Um, oftentimes we think about the academic side of things and we're not really thinking about practically how to make this chemistry more useful for potential industrial applications. The round table, it was a perfect way to, to connect academics and industry and I think the, the dialogue back and forth was, was uh, mutually beneficial. And what the outcome is, is uh, building this toolbox for the future of sustainability. Well one thing I think is very important is access to really great tools to help um, our scientists um, make the right decisions. They produced tools that the, all chemists can use, a mass intensity calculator where mass intensity is a measure of the amount of waste that's co-produced with the manufacture of a pharmaceutical active ingredient. Whenever you scale something up, a lot of material is used, there's a lot of resources. We have used this tool um, to get a better understanding where we are with our top 12 products. The Pharma Roundtable has developed a solvent selection guide which is basically harmonized or averaged out several companies, individual solvent guides. If you're using less solvent, you're paying for less solvent, but you're also paying for it again when you have to dispose of it. So you can also cut down your waste disposal costs. So that is a huge selling point actually, even bringing new companies in. Here are these state-of-the-art reagent guides that are gonna say, you take any given transformation, and it's gonna give you the greenest possible way to make this bond. That's pretty powerful. Pharma industry is still a business, so we have to make sure that we deliver on the bottom line and not only, you know, on the green aspect. I think these metrics that help us to do both. My experience on the Pharmaceutical Roundtable has been amazing. Um, there's a lot of very dedicated people who have a lot of knowledge and experience. One of the most important contributions that adds a lot of value to the work that we do in the Roundtable is to have the umbrella of the ACS. 
really uh, as a stamp of quality and a stamp of good science of what we do together with other pharmaceutical companies. We're promoting a, a very responsible agenda. We get to talk to other people from other companies. These are the things you can't, you can't really pay for. These uh, global interactive collaborations is a lot of value for Merck. All in all, I think there are a lot of benefits from being in a round table and you know, it's difficult really to find any downside. And allowing these collaborations, I think, prevents you from reinventing the wheel. In the end, the metrics all show that if you impact that green chemistry number, the cost of goods and the efficiency of the process are going to be optimal. What they've shown again and again, year after year, is that the return on the investment is, is, is enormous. And if they see this, they say, okay, green chemistry does deliver the cost of goods impact. How can we take that to the next level? You know, as much as it's great to have the researchers be pursuing green chemistry, I think ultimately if you uh, encourage students at a younger age to, uh, to recognize the value of this, you, you have a really big chance of making an impact in the future. The scientists that are being trained now are going to be the leaders in our industry. They're also going to be the new professors. And if industries out there are visible promoting uh, green chemistry like the round table is, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can help get through these students. People in, in the pharmaceutical business really care. You know, they, they, they try to help patients, but they want to also help the rest of society, right? So ultimately, green chemistry should just go away and be chemistry, and it's a given in the screen. Um, so the closer we get to that goal, the, you know, the better. While there are tremendous examples of green chemistry in the pharmaceutical industry, they just scratch the surface of what's possible.